and composite power plus fiber looks tempting, but getting enough watts to a hungry PDZ over hundreds of meters turns into voltage drop gymnastics. Hi tech lovers! Welcome back to Fast Cabling! So have you ever tried to cover a whole boulevard with PDZ cameras? And the last pole is at 750 meters away. Well, today we're taking on a real client build, the Sport Boulevard project. We'll be showing you exactly how we deploy over 60 Palco PDZ cameras on outdoor poles using a fiber backbone. We'll explain the why, the how, and demo the setup. So now our clients needed two things. Each camera had to run independently, every stream had to be high bandwidth and rock solid. And the PDZ camera's features, pan, tilt, zoom, infrared, so it had to have the power they crave. And there were few challenges hiding in that wish list. So Ethernet's 100 meters limit was a non-starter for 700 plus meters. And Pelco PDZ models want serious power. There are few power options, and our client chose PoE++ in the 60 to 95 watts range. Now the boulevard is outdoor, so everything must be rugged. And each pole has to be its own island, its own power, and its own link back. And here's where our story turns. Copper cannot go the distance, so we ran a single mode fiber backbone from the control room to each single pole. And that decision solves distance, bandwidth, and crosstalk problems in one move. So now let's move on to the demonstration board and build it end to end. So now we're here, things start apology. From the control room, we home run a single mode fiber strings to each pole. No daisy chain, no share splices that take down a whole block if one joint fails. And each run lands into the termination box in our control room. And inside the control room, we have core switches with SFP ports aggregates all camera links. And now at the pole, the Pelco camera's built-in SFP port let us terminate fiber directly into the camera. And power? Long-haul DC just isn't practical at these distances and loads. And composite power plus fiber looks tempting, but getting enough watts to a hungry PDZ over hundreds of meters turns into voltage drop gymnastics. So we went with local AC 220 volt at each pole, then converted that to PUE++ right there using outdoor industrial grade PUE++ injectors. So it's clean, efficient, and easy to maintain. So we start here. Each incoming single mode fiber connects directly to the termination box. Make sure you label everything to make the whole setup clean and clear. First, we'll use a fiber patch cord to connect from the termination box to our 24 port SFP switch. This switch has 24 SFP port and also four 10G uplink port. And for 750 meters, we're using a standard 1G single mode SFPs rated for 10 kilometers. They overkill in a good way. Lots of optical budget, lots of stability. Use the fiber patch cord, connect to the switch. Now we have 60 cameras, so we'll be needing three switches like this. Then we're going to connect our switch to the network video recorder using a copper to fiber transceiver. Plug it into the SFP slot, and now you are able to connect the Ethernet cable directly to the switch and it's already connected to our NVR. Now let's pull the fiber. Single mode armored fiber for the wind. It's UV resistant, perfect for outdoor conduits and pole razors. And should respect band radius, no sharp turns, and watch pulling tension. When we pull the cable, we should use the pulling eye to protect the fiber head. And today we're using this two-string pre-made fiber optic cable. They're plug and play, super convenient. And you should clean your connector, inspect, clean and inspect again. 
Now for the Palco model with SFP slots, all you need to do is insert the SFP directly to the camera. But since we don't have the Palco unit on site, so we'll be using our PDZ camera with Ethernet. That's why we need to add this. This is a media converter to pretend we have the built-in SFP port on the camera. The fiber will connect directly to the media converter just like plugging into the camera. So the data part we already took care of. Now for the power time. Now make sure there are 220 volt feet at each pole, then we have the PLE++ injector. Everything is bounded and grounded to the pole's earthing system. Now you'll see two power paths. The 220 volt AC enters, fit the PLE injector. And this injector takes the 220 volt AC and output PLE++ on Ethernet for the camera. So now we're using a short patch cord to connect the PoE injector directly. And these injectors are IP67, built for heat, cold, dust, and rain. And this is where PoE++ matters. PDZ with IR, heaters, and fast zoom move can draw serious currents. And PoE++ keeps voltage stable at the camera head and prevent blowouts when IR kicks on. So at the core, we should verify each SFP port is up and check the errors so you can add more cameras. And a few tips from the field, choose single mode fiber for distance and future proofing. And keep your cassocks run at the pole short and outdoor rated. Gel field if you're in a wet climate. And you should seal every connector with proper glands and include drip loops so water cannot travel along the cable and you should bound and ground everything. So fiber kills the distance problem. 750 meters feels like nothing. It also gives us clean bandwidth for high bitrate stream. The pole by pole topology means any one failure is just one camera, not the entire boulevard. And local AC plus an outdoor PoE++ plus plus injectors answers the high power demand without the headache of pushing DC down a long line. So that's how we deploy PDZ cameras over a fiber backbone. If you're facing long distances, heavy power draws, and harsh weather, this architecture just works. Now feel free to drop your questions below and tell us what you want us to deep dive next. And if this video helped, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe our channel. And I'll see you in our next one.